Well, here we are in uh, late winter, after Christmas in England, and uh, I'm missing, of course, the summer and sunshine. And uh, what I thought I'd like to do is this particular picture, a composite that I've made up um, of donkeys on the beach here at Mablethorpe, and a little electra, and a little beach train that goes, and some children on donkeys there. And we'll treat it as another impressionist piece, nice and bright and colourful, little broken strokes of colour um, to give a vibrance to it, to give the summertime feel. We're going to do this in uh, acrylics again. Um, if I'm not happy with it, then I'll work some oils up over it, but hopefully the acrylics will be all right in there. And remember that we can work oils over acrylics, but we can't do it the other way around. We can't put acrylics and plastic paint over oil paint. So if I need to make it more vibrant, if the acrylics don't really work, then I'll, I'll change back and put a bit of oil on, but hopefully it'll be all right with the acrylics. The first decisions I had to make is one on composition. Here's my basic composition of just the donkeys, Sue and the children, and I've added this bit of beach in, I've added that train in there and this figure. But I could also have in uh, a child here or a dog here, which would mean that we're going to fill this corner more. I'll decide that at the last minute. What I'm going to do is draw all of this lot in first. And it's an ordinary white canvas, I haven't primed it at all, I'm going to work directly into colour onto the white. Right, now it's quite a difficult choice because you have to decide whether this space is just going to be um, filled with uh, perspective of brush strokes going through here, or whether I actually want to bring in this Labrador dog here, which would be quite fun, uh, especially as these donkeys appear to be looking that way towards it. I think I'll try it, and if I don't like it, I can always take it out again. But working on the scale of the dog, the nose would come just here, the backside comes here. We know that proportion. The top of the head is going to come just about a third of the way up here, about here I think we will keep the dog in. What I have done is to <coughs> change the shadow here because <coughs> although it would link the two together I quite like the idea of the shape of the donkeys coming out here and um, I think it might be quite nice to try and keep that ear of that donkey rather than linking in with the, with the dog to decide whether I want that dog's face to come into that shadow or not that donkey's head should be down here somewhere so whether we just to link it there maybe like that because the dog's shadow then is going to come around that's got to come out this way as well like that maybe and then what we've got to do is make sure we've got a few dark lines and things to link this together so I think that will about do us what is my drawing ready to go I'll just get my paints ready now Let's take a look at some of these paints we've got to use and the uh, different ways that they are presented to us. And depending on the amount you use or the amount you want to buy as to the sort of size tub that you have. You can come up from the standard size tubes or smaller ones than that right the way up to the larger tubs. Usually the larger the amount you buy the cheaper it becomes. So to get the larger tub is cheaper in the long run but if you just want to travel and keep light then a bag of these smaller tubes is easier to carry. Then we'll look at the different ways we can use for painting those onto canvases. Okay, firstly let's look at the uh, way to store our acrylics. Acrylics dry very quickly, so one very simple way to keep them fresh and very cheap way to do so is to use what's called a stay wet palette. Now you can buy these boxes commercially and they're very expensive. But if you just get an ordinary sandwich box like this, some of the slightly deeper ones are better, and lay into it a sheet of kitchen uh, paper, kitchen towel, and then a sheet of greaseproof paper on top, or even tracing paper, wet that, 
and your paints will stay uh, wet for weeks and weeks and weeks. As long as that lid is shut, they will remain damp, remain wet. We've already talked about being able to freeze oil paints. We don't freeze acrylics, but if we keep them with the lid shut in a stay wet palette like this, it's a cheap way to do it. You can see these paints are still wet now, look, and they've been in there some weeks. Now, from that, we can have a second palette with exactly the same, the kitchen paper and the tracing paper or uh, grease proof, and we can mix on that as well. Personally, I just use ordinary plastic palettes to mix into because I find that the paint will just peel out of those afterwards, they're smooth palettes, and it always dries in them anyway, and after a while I can just get a knife and peel the stuff out, it doesn't matter to me. So for me, a stay wet palette and simple plastic palettes like that are quite adequate. Now, what do we apply the paint with? There are lots of ways of applying paint to a surface. We can use sponges, we can use our fingers, we can use rags, we can use brushes of different textures and surfaces and shapes. Um, we can even use a roller like this, which is rather fun, and you'll see me using this later in my demonstrations. These little rollers of different sizes are great for putting backgrounds on or making textures. And actually, one of the larger paintings I've done, you'll see me doing almost the entire painting with a roller. This is my watercolour set. And you can use watercolour brushes for uh, acrylics if they're the stiffer type. The softer they are, the more difficult it is. It's okay for very fine work. Remember that we can use acrylics just like watercolours if we want. We can paint them thinly with a glaze, as a glaze, um, or we can paint them thickly. If you're going to paint them thickly, then watercolour brushes are going to be too soft for it, and you'll need oil brushes, which have a little more body to them, a little more consistency. I like these filberts, because I find, for me personally, that a filbert has a lovely round end, it's got a flat edge, and I've got more control with that, especially for painting portraits and so on. We can use it thinly or we can use it broadly across like that. And I also prefer the long handle brushes because I reach out when I'm painting as an impressionist, I like to reach out to the canvas and see what I'm doing. So for me, these filberts are the best. Equally though, you can use a flat if you want. The bristle brushes tend to be a little bit hard, so I tend to use these nylons, which are an intermediate brush, a brush that is too soft will clog up with the paint and won't lay it on very well. A brush that is too stiff and too bristly will take the paint off the canvas. With a nice intermediate brush like this will lay the paint on. You can gently lay it on with brush skills, layer over layer, while it's still wet even. Talking about laying things whilst they're still wet, then we have of course the painting knives. Now there's a difference between painting knives and palette knife. That is a palette knife and you can see that it comes straight across. The blade is flat. But a painting knife, which is quite different, has a blade like a trowel there, which comes up at an angle and your fingers are not touching the painting. So for most of your use, a painting knife is going to be far better. And one like that, which I was one of my favourites, uh, with that particular shape, you can do almost everything with it. So we've got different painting knives there for different purposes and palette knives. Long ones, pointy ones, small ones, large ones. and even a fork for making textures and actually even some household spatulas can be handy for doing larger amounts when you're really layering and plastering work on. Now then there are specialist brushes after that. We've got obviously round brushes and small pointy brushes such as this one for doing much finer work and details. And then there's also the riggers. We've got a very long fine brush for doing very long fine lines or fine details and the fan brushes for blending. One of the problems with acrylics is that they dry so very quickly, so you've got to blend very fast, and often if you can't do that in time, you have to then work glazes over the top. That's one of the disadvantages, is that they can dry very fast. With oils, it can be the other way around. It takes ever so long for them to dry, and if you want to do a fast glaze, you can't do that with oils. So it's horses for courses. So sometimes you might want to paint with acrylics first and then work over the oils over the top, which we can do. Splattering can be done, as we're going to see with acrylics, and we can do that either with a toothbrush or by splattering with a stiff bristle brush, or even one of the more um, textural effect brushes. Uh, and, I'm going to sh and I'm going to discuss with you how we can get textures with various brushes and sponges and so on as we go along through this. So for me, this would be the set that I would be using nearly all the time with my acrylics. I keep a few sponges in there, I keep some small round pointy brushes, I keep my uh, rigger brush, a fan, and my filberts, and that series will do me for nearly everything I want to do, either in oils or in acrylics. The same sort of set would do, although I try to keep them separate. Right, by you to start with the sky, but I'm going to do broken colour effects. What I'm going to do first of all is to um, put a base coat on so that the paint glows through, the colour glows through. So I'm going to start with my white 
add a little bit of cerulean to give a nice background and with a big SAA acrylic brush we'll just whack on this blue all the way across nice and lively with a nice cheerful painting here I could use some masking tape across here, I may even do that this time to get a nice straight edge, a really lovely straight edge here now I'm going to go down to a smaller brush whilst this is still wet start to work some colours into this to get a bit more vibrance I'm going to go down to number 6 now Filbert and uh, I'm going to start to add a little bit of pink onto that I'll take some very light magenta a little bit of white again not too much I want to get some pink into the background of this and we'll use little tiny strokes just dotting and dashing into it now the effect of this will be to play the warm against the cool what I'm going to get is a nice lively effect of glowing light as I'm just blending little strokes into the still wet acrylic paint underneath across into this don't worry if you come slightly over the horizon paint back in my impressionist style again where I can get the feeling of joy and light and life in my brush strokes and colors you see how that already has got a nice liveliness to it And because I'm going to have some waves and quite light things later on um, I want the sky to be a little bit darker so now I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise and add some white to that and I'm going to come back into the sky especially higher up with some little strokes of this turquoise which will make the sky seem a bit lighter lower down and I'll make those strokes less and less as I come down so that the sky becomes lighter at the horizon. Just tickling it in, this is another nice reason for using filberts. The Impressionists used mainly flat ended brushes, which is where the traditional flat square ended oil painting brush comes from, those days of the French Impressionists. But I have a personal preference for a slightly rounder edge and I think it's better for drawing as well, especially if you're doing something like portraits because um, you've got more control with a rounder edge brush to go around curves and surfaces. That's my own you know, feeling anyway. Because I want a really feeling of a, a warmer glowing day, even though it wasn't that warm on this particular day. That's what I want the feeling of. Right, we let that dry off and um, I think I'm going to work my way down to the sea next. So whilst that's drying, let's look at what we're going to do down here. And I'm going to take some of that cerulean and white again, and add it with that turquoise, and just start to paint in some of these light blues down here, establish them in the background quite loosely. We start loose, we finish tight. We start tight with stuff from the beginning. We'll come back in with the warmer colours later, but then we're going to reflect those colours of the um, train and so on. I don't need to be detailed, I know what the figure is there, so I can pick that in afterwards. And this is how I'd be painting if I was out there as quickly as this. Just blocking in these areas, just to get, just to get an underpainting going. I'm going to take some of that pink and come back into here as well. Use vertical strokes as well as horizontal, especially when painting reflections. You have the pink in the sky, so it's got to be reflecting down here, isn't it? Now we can start on the on the sea, although I could put some masking tape across here. We'll let that dry just a bit more. So I want to play with masking tape today just to show you how that will work. Now, hopefully our acrylic is dry enough to be able to come across this and we'll put a band of masking tape right across this line. So we just rub that across. Now if we were doing a David Hockney we'd probably try and burnish that tape right into the edge of the canvas to make sure we've got a really sharp edge. But we're not. We're doing a Peter Wood. So now I'm going to come back with my um, 
C and you want to make it slightly mauve. So I'm going to take some white again, some cerulean again, a little bit of water, make it too thin, and a little bit of the pink straight away, maybe a little touch of cobalt blue this time, make a little bit darker. I may even go a little bit greener into the distance there yet, so I'm going to come all the way along, not right up to the edge yet, just painting this slightly more purple tint in down below here. Then I want to go slightly higher up and come in with a little bit more turquoise into that for the distance. And this time I'm going to go up to the edge and make a sharp line. I'm just blending that into the colour below along here and I notice that this, this is a, a North Sea coast we don't have these lovely Mediterranean blues I'm afraid here as it comes along it actually gets a little bit warmer so I'm going to take a bit of brown and add that along this bit here just make that a little bit browner along there coming into that because in this North Sea, it's nearly always stirred up. It's never quite beautifully blue and Mediterranean. There's this very slight tint of brown coming into it across there. And while I'm at it, then I will bring that colour all the way down to meet up with this other one. And we'll bring in some more of the light blues across that way. It's a bit drier. And I think for this afternoon, that'll be about enough just to give us a primary coat. I'm going to add the waves into that later and put some more purer colours on afterwards. Let's take off that tape. We can do that very quickly and see the effect we get and make sure it is the one we want. We always put the tape back on again. And there we are. Get that nice line across there. It is rather sharp, but... Uh, I think it's the sort of effect we want this time. I may just come down and soften in with a slight glaze later on because it's a little bit too sharp for me. Now this might seem like quite a strange thing to do but I've mixed up a purple, so some blue and some uh, red and a bit of um, green to make a greeny coloured purple. And that's what these shadows are going to be. And I'm also going to paint a colour below. I'm going to paint a colour all the way around and get into the dog there. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to it because I want to paint my sand across this whole thing. And I want this purple colour to sort of blowing through, if you see what I mean. Because we're going to play the other system, the colour circle, I want something quite vibrant, which means that the yellow is the opposite to the purple and it will glow against these colours. So let's just get these shadows in first. Might seem a bit of a backward way of doing it, but um, I think as I go on with this you'll, you'll get the idea of why I'm doing it. I won't bother with the little bits that are left because um, I can paint those little bits of light in later. We put the right shapes and the right colours, relevant one to another, in the right places and this jigsaw just comes together later saying that but it's a lovely way to paint and it saves having to worry about whether something is something it just happens as you go along that way it just appears so much easier to paint there we are it's got little bits of dark now I need to add some yellow to that I want some um, just to make it a little bit lighter a nice mucky colour but it get rid of all this white that I don't want and I can put some more purple and dots in there later a little bit more warmth into it, a bit more red. I'll give myself a lovely under colour. We're working into the browns again now, so I'm working into sort of warm, warm dark brown over the whole thing here now. And I'm going to put my light colours over this later. I might see more of this colour for the actual animals and things too, but let's just coat this painting for the moment. Let's just get rid of this white lose it so that we can put the lighter colours over the top soon. The whole thing will change again later when I get the other colours over it, the lighter colours over it. 
It's a bit more of a glow going within that shadow, just to break it up a fraction. There we go. Let's start with that. I want to lose this, as I say, lose this white. You might think I'm mad, but it'll all work out in the end, you see. Alright, let that dry off. Right, this brown's now dry enough to work on. So we'll take a bit of light blue now and start to work the sea back into it a bit. So there's turquoise we're using before. A little touch of white, a little touch of cerulean, a little touch of the turquoise. I'm going to go to the pinks later as well. That gives us a lovely light blue. And we'll come back into this. To get these light colours that are going on behind, just dragging it over the surface of the canvas. Until the brown shows through. Don't worry about going over the figures just slightly. I'm going to let this blue come down and through into the sand a bit. Glow through here a bit to give this reflective wet feeling. We're using this broken colour effect then. Where that in one colour glue through another by scumbling this over the surface and letting the canvas make little dots or textures if you like. Just almost dry brushing some of this blue over the surface of this rich brown which will help to pull all this together. So all these techniques to, to try out and have fun with. I like to explore and to experiment. I hate doing the same old things all the time. We'll keep changing it a bit and Try new ways. There we are. Now I'll make a start actually on um, some of these donkeys too. I'm talking about blues. We've got blue greys here and we've just done a film uh, on colour. And we talked about the other system, the colour circle for that. And we talked about warms and cool colours. Every colour has a warm and a cool. Now these blues are actually going to be mixed with a little bit of brown start to make some slight grey colours here. And this blue in the sea is just tinted down a fraction. I'm just going to start painting in the lighter colours of the greys on the on the donkeys with this blue we've just been using. Nice and loosely I'm just doing the underpainting. To gradually work it up over the top and just pushing it in with the tip of the brush you see. You've got it on your brush, if you see it somewhere else, then put it in that place as well. Take a bit of the brown and add it into that light blue. It'll give us a slightly browner grey. Here we go, look. So taking some of the brown we had and adding it to my, my light blue, I can get this brown grey of the donkey here. And in fact, the Labrador has this sort of cool grey as well. So let's paint that dog in. Let me just get the base, base coat in, this sort of shadow colour. You can just see the drawing through, so it's not quite opaque. I'm not painting in detail, I'm just putting the basic underpainting in. And I'm going to paint the lighter colour on the sand around the donkey arteries, remember, so this seems a strange colour now but when we actually get it done it will all work out. So I we'll take some of that white and a little yellow ochre which won't seem quite right yet but it's going to be a lot warmer. And we we'll just start to add in these warmer yellow bits gradually building this up Give this effect of light and the impression of it first. You should start to see these donkeys are appearing out of this murkily now. As I'm building up these these shapes bit by bit. You start to see a donkey appearing now. Now I'm going to have to add some deeper colours. So I'm going to take some Prussian blue now. 
led it to that same brown from earlier. Just start to go a bit darker in places here. So I'm going to go light around them later so it's, it's not carved in stone yet. It's just to get some basic tones going. Fluffing up of these, fluffiness of these um, donkeys. Just using the tip of the brush to and I can pick it all out with highlights afterwards. And everything is sort of blending into itself a bit more, isn't it now? But you'll see why. We're starting to make these shapes make sense. Now we're just starting to use some purer colours as you can see. We're just starting to get into these darks now. And really starting to play with real colour if you like. Well, I've got that blue on my brush in fact. The train has it here. Fairly balanced. And we start to bring that blue into even the donkey. We've almost lost our whites now, which is what we're trying to do. We're nowhere near exact yet. gradually working up this painting and becoming more detailed as we go on. Very loose at the beginning and then we'll gradually work these details up. At the moment we're still working on these donkeys and figures and we'll go into that to the uh, distance later. I'm going to just come back now and uh, add a little more pinky blue so a little more colour down here. We have to start looking where these colours are elsewhere as well if they're coming into the, the channel on the saddle here or they're actually coming across on the on the donkey. And the idea is that I gradually get tighter and the thing will come into focus far more and you'll be able to understand it. I'm going to start painting a little bit more detail as we go along. But each of these little marks has a meaning. So it makes that man's face. Let's try and get the colour of this coat a bit better. And put a leg there, and a fold. And got a little bit more genterish, a bit pinker. So I'm just going to move around. This whole the values are going to change considerably yet because when I put the sand in, the sand's going to be a lot, lot lighter. To try and get this effect of the sunlight just shining across and catching parts of them by just putting in these shapes again, setting it down hopefully in the right places, the right colours and the right shapes in the right places will gradually build up an impression of this spring day, not exactly bright summer but just a little, the feeling of this Mablethorpe beach, children making the most of it to try and enjoy it. We're almost ready to start slapping in these really light, bright, sunlit colours, which I'm looking forward to doing on the beach itself. I've been waiting for that for a while. Just a few more colours to do. Working on these figures. I'm going to go back to quite a large brush. Something in between. This one will do. Nice fill, but. And the first colour I'm going to make is just white and yellow ochre before I start really plastering in the lemon yellows and cadmium yellows because I really want to do get lots of lovely yellow into this. But we'll just start to look how much lighter it's going to go even with those colours. So a little yellow ochre first of all. Look how warm that is. 
And I want to go down to my stronger yellow, so I'm going to add some chrome yellow into that now. And we'll really go for lovely sunlight and bring out these animals into the beach. And you'll see why I'm going to leave that dark area underneath now. To get the paint just right, nice mixture underneath that warm glow through here. Picking up the sunlight as it catches through and in between these donkeys. So yellow ochre and white, chrome yellow. Fantastic way to paint, just so lovely to do this. And leaving our I'm going to add a bit more lemon yellow to this colour, and white, to give it a slightly greenier tint. Start to work in some of those as well. Really want to get this effect of sunlight now. And of course, once we've got that colour there, it's going to be reflecting elsewhere, so we're going to start to put it into the donkey a bit now as well. And you can see what I mean about warm against cools, and the opposite in the colour circle, the purple against the yellows. And now we're starting to see the strong light against dark as well, which is enabling me to give a feeling of the really hot day. And of course with a painting like this we always have to then decide when we're going to stop, don't we? Now, I want to bring this cream carefully up into the sky. I don't want the eye to be fooled into seeing a shimmer of light here now. I'm even going to start to look at some green, some actual green, into the sand. This is a very warm green. Into those shadows, a little more purple. A smaller brush, go to a round brush now. I want to start picking up some of the details into the background. Got a little round brush. Number four, big enough for this job. I'll take some of the white with a little tiny touch of the yellow in it, not much. I want it to be fairly pure. Let's just see if we can find some of these waves that are going along in the background here. Don't want to detract too much from the main picture. It's also giving us a bit more scale in the background as well. Getting there quite suddenly. Now, finally, we'll uh, do a little bit more detail on the, on the donkeys. See what we can do with that. So, lemon yellow and white. And a clean bit on my palette. Lemon yellow and white. A little touch of red into it. Let's see if we can get it just a bit lighter in places like that. And we need to do much more is the question. Not really, I don't think. We've got quite a nice lively little piece. I don't want to make a photograph. We're still working with a painting, so what I am going to do though just try and go a bit stronger with that 
sand in the foreground yet. I'll take a little bit of cadmium orange and white and the yellow. Just touch a bit of that here and there.